In today's episode, I had a very honest conversation with my friends Carly and Martina to expose some of the untold truths of being a musician. We talk about our experiences with burnout. I feel like I get burnout probably like once a month. Record labels. If it's working, hallelujah. The many hats you have to wear as a musician, the realities of social media, and the instability that musicians face. We don't allow ourselves to be emotionally attached to dollar signs. Plus, at the end of this video, we talk about being a woman in the music industry. I don't think men are our competition. So let's get into it. This is what I needed when I was starting my music career. This is the Logan Alexandra Show. Being a musician in 2023 is a lot. There's a lot of highs and lows, and I wanted to sit down with you guys today because I feel like you are involved in so many different aspects of music in this age. You're full-on producers. You produced a song for me this week. Yes. Anyway, I should say first, this is Carly and Martina. Hi, guys. Hi. And I'm excited to (laughs) sit down with you and talk about exposing the truth of what the music industry is actually practically like. So... Give everyone like a little introduction of who you are and what you do. So we're producers, songwriters, artists, and content creators. I feel like as an independent artist, you guys are independent. You're not signed to a label. Currently yes. independent. You have so many hats that you have to wear. I feel that too. Do you feel like doing all the things that you do hinders your creativity or actually enhances it and makes you feel more creative. I think that when we were learning how to do all of these different things and figuring out the schedule, we had a lot of periods of burnout or like kind of a lack of creativity. But now I think we've gotten it together. Like we know what part of our day needs to be used where and when we need to walk away from something and focus on something else. And I think we also prioritize the production and the artistry of our career the most now, the most we ever have. So because of that, I actually feel like for the past couple of months, we've been just straight inspired. Yeah. It's like there's been, been really no burnout, nice. which has been so nice. <laughs> it's felt so good. And I also think something that we've learned that works for us is like if we're going to have multiple things that we have to get done that are kind of on opposite sides of the spectrum, definitely taking like a 10 minute break Breaks in between everything. those two things to reset your brain we found to be really helpful just for us we'll work for a couple hours then we take a break then we go do this then we like take a walk our actual work hours and productivity is increased i have a question for you because there's two of us so we're able to pull each other out of it but with you it's you so what do you do in those moments to help yourself mentally get where you need to be I like schedule out my days actually, which is another thing that helps me with burnout as I schedule out structure. uh, Yeah, structure helps a lot. So I'll know like, okay, Monday's an editing day and then Tuesday's a filming day. And some days like I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to film today. You guys were talking about yesterday how you were making a demo a day just out of discipline. Even if you didn't feel creative, you were doing that. And I think that actually gets you out of a burnout because you're forcing yourself to be creative and forcing yourself out of that rut. If I'm really feeling stuck, I'll go for a walk because I think getting fresh air is really important. Super important. Super important and it helps me get creative. Going for a drive is always really good. And what do you listen to during those walks, drives? Like is it podcasts, music? Usually silence. Same. I like to sit in silence because there's so much noise. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much noise during the day. And hearing yourself, especially I'm staring at myself for so long. Just being silent and not having to think about any of that stuff is creatively refreshing. I feel like creating space creates clarity. So when we're creating space away from what we're doing and we come back, you're like, no, this is what I need to do. The biggest lesson we've taught ourselves is to understand that your rewind time is as important as your work time and how you're going to recharge is going to determine your next day. Yeah. And I also think because, and you probably can attest to this more because you're really in the content space and we are too, but you even said like you'll spend a whole day either looking at yourself through a phone on a ring light filming or looking at yourself editing. It's so, I heard this from someone else and I thought it was so true. It's so important to give yourself time to spend time unobserved, whether that's other people observing you or you're observing yourself. It's so important to just, it was, it's so important to just live your life as like, from the first person not looking at yourself or having someone else look at you. What What about about you? (laughs) How do you feel on that? I feel like I get burnt out probably like once a month. I'm like, 
what am I doing? What what is this? And then oh, we love an existential crisis. Yeah. What what is my life? <laughs> what is going yes. on? Yeah. Why am I here awesome. Here? It's actually a bit healthy because like oh, sure. when I'm in those moments, I actually think about, okay, wait, what am I doing? And what do I actually want to be spending my time on? And I'm like reinventing everything that I want to be and do online and in music like once a month. Well, I think you said something really interesting about kind of one of the, dare I say it, positive aspects of whatever you want to call it, creative burnout, like a what am I doing moment where not only does it actually allow you to center yourself and refocus, but I feel like in this industry and also in life too, but really in this industry, there is a lot of ebbs and flows and you're going to feel real highs. Like I feel great about this. You're going to feel real lows. Like what am I doing? And something that I think you just said is really cool that some of those burnout moments is actually an indicator that you're on that way up to productivity and feeling good again. And it's just it's it's about riding the waves, basically. So I think there's a real positive side to it, too, which I think is important to note so that you don't feel so terrible about it when you're in it, if that makes sense. No, you're so right, because I feel like after every burnout comes a high of like me so excited about something, some sort of project. When you were feeling burnout, was it usually because you were working for too long on one thing? Or yes, or maybe we didn't have like the North Star of what the next like project was, what what it was Mm -hmm. above everything else we were trying to do. Like Mm -hmm. sometimes, and I do think this happens with a lot of people, we get so caught up in like, what we think are success points that we forget the bigger picture of what we're trying to do. Like what we're trying to do is make a great artist project. So things like creating certain amount of content and getting certain amount of views, those are great. But if the bigger picture, if if you spend a week away from the studio, we failed our larger purpose. Mm. So I love that that. you said that, like figuring out your larger purpose and then everything that you do besides that is to get to the larger purpose exactly because I feel that with social media I'll be sitting in my room making a silly little video and I'm like why am I doing this yeah and you have to have more perspective of like okay I'm doing this because it's fueling the bigger purpose like you might have to do silly things now in the growing process but it's to get to the bigger purpose I don't think it's silly though yeah I don't either I find it sometimes really hard to see the bigger picture when you're doing the smaller things and I think that's when it feels really dumb and silly and it's felt like that for me so many times where I'm just like why am I doing this and you get into this really negative headspace and it's at that point that we have to remind each other what our bigger purpose is what our north star is and how we're going to supplement that how do you handle feeling like the little things are silly because I I I get it yeah (laughs) What do you do? I think it's hard because it feels silly until you post something and then I get validation from like views, which isn't good because like, you know, I should be first fueled by like, I love what I'm putting out. I'm so excited about this video. I know, but you're this song. human too. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So I, I go back and forth on that. So like you're producing a song for me this week. So being here for two days or like really working on this song yeah. for one day. The week leading up to it, I had like this creative high because I was so excited to come here and do this. Like this is the stuff that refuels me creatively. And I want to be doing stuff like this more often. But I think the reality of it is, is one, you have to have all the money in the world to be able to do this like high production, not you guys, but just production in general. No, yeah. And music video production and marketing, like to be able to release a song takes a lot of money no matter if you're doing it low level or not and you can't do it all the time so like me sitting in my room making a choir video and a mashup is free and I'm still getting to do what I love but it's just a an extension of like something that I love like doing this with you guys this week so I think that the way you've kind of classified it and like the realistic struggles I think you just worded it so perfectly because that is the truth like Unless you're the producer, songwriter, singer, et cetera, in one package, yeah, you have to outsource. And it's not possible to do that every single day or every single week. Maybe if you were signed, but if you're indie, no. Yeah. That's the thing. I've been thinking about that lately is like, oh, if I just had a label who would like pay for my production and my music videos, that'd be so Or at awesome. least like set up the rights and like pay for the rights and stuff. Yeah. Like just the whatever that would be. I mean, but the thing is like you do have to pay that all back 
but not do they the like moment. take a percentage how i don't know how it works well i mean i'll say what i can i'll say what i can say yeah. they're all different so what i'm about to say mm-hmm. like there'll be labels in the comments or something like <laughs> Isn't that true? i don't do like, it i do I, it i'm not popular with but I have. one caveat if, it, yeah. if anybody's watching you know everyone or someone who is signed will be like that's not how i did it but so all these different kinds of deals. The majors are different. You do get in advance. It's normally pretty good. You do end up paying it all back through what you recoup. So you before you see the money back in your account, even if you're making a lot of money, it's all paid back to them. And then you get a percentage of what you're actually earning. And it's normally not super favorable until, you're, until your name sells, until you're at a higher level. And then one of the ways that artists make so much money is after they're big and getting all these numbers, they renegotiate deals with higher advances and lower recoupment rates and lower percentages that they have to give and, you know, share. That is so far down the line. Like, don't even think about that yet. The smaller labels, the indie labels, and especially now we're seeing it with the rise of indie labels, they don't give advances or they give advances of like five grand, which let's be real, is not going to like cover much. And they take a percentage with no money up front. But what they do sometimes supposedly is they help with the promotion which they argue is worth the percentage and it depends depends on the song on the song the artist the artist the label the time the day it's released how it does the social media following so much goes into it but basically like any path it doesn't matter what path it is as long as it's the right path for you as an artist yeah. that is the right path because there are so many options there are so many different ways it can go independent not independent advanced no advanced it doesn't matter and if there's it's working hallelujah is how i there's see it. people who choose every single one of those avenues and they do so well and like taking the big advance and recouping very little that was the path for them and that worked out and then there's also people on every single path who didn't who it didn't work out for and it's not that the path is wrong it's just sometimes it works it wasn't meant sometimes to be. sometimes it doesn't and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. I think if you're looking at any sort of label or signing something, you got to have like a lawyer look over your contracts and tell you if it's fair or not. Not even like just label contracts. All of your contracts to make sure that everything that you're signing is fair. We're musicians. We don't know all the like legal terms. So it's very complicated. And you need someone who like is competent in that stuff to be looking over everything. We do. We do have legal advice okay. always. And I think it's the most important thing yes. you can have. Maybe mm-hmm. more important sometimes than a manager. Mm-hmm. I hate to say it. Mm-hmm. They they just play such different roles. I guess it's hard to compare, but let's be real. Like, But normally the managers know most things about contracts anyway. I was going to say it also depends on the manager you have. But a lawyer is really going to get into like the nitty gritty. You know what? There are a lot of lawyers who do this for artists. And it might be something you'd be interested in. Legal costs are obviously so expensive. And indie artists, I mean, basically all your money goes to a lawyer. But there's a lot of lawyers who will do this where they actually don't charge at all. And what they do is they take 5% of your profits for however long you work out. And if you're not making like 100 plus, okay, even if let's say you make 100 grand in a year, the lawyer gives you great legal advice. They take nothing and they charge five grand out of that profit you've already made. It's the greatest deal in the world for artists that are coming up because you get legal advice as much as you want unlimited hours they will fight for you they will work for you and if you make money you give them a piece rather than giving them the money up front and then like you don't know what's going to happen to your career there's a lot of lawyers who actually do that in the entertainment industry i think every artist if you're going to invest in one thing invest in making sure when you sign contracts that you're not getting screwed or you're not just looking it over yourself right because i think a lot of times probably they're banking on that you're gonna look it over and not understand and just sign they're thinking like oh i'll get this little bit of extra out of them Mm -hmm. so that if it all goes south i've i've still protected myself you know right it's what everyone wants to do you gotta make sure you're protected too you know yep for brand deals labels everything everything everything. production music videos have you noticed with brand deals especially in the contract sometimes they try to have like unlimited usage forever Mm -hmm. and that's little things they hide and it's like wait a minute but if i'm gonna be doing more and more and getting bigger and you paid me like what five hundred dollars for this video Mm -hmm. and five years down the line i win a grammy and you're able to use my face and my video now for free like Mm. no way but you know if you didn't know about perpetuity and like having it forever you Mm -hmm. wouldn't know what to do that's good advice yeah because i've definitely signed those yes we probably have (laughs) too I'm curious for myself and I'm sure like other people would be curious too. As an independent musician, 
you guys and myself, you have to wear so many hats. You manage your, yourself. You're in charge of the production and the songwriting and the singing and the what marketing, and the all of these things. <laughs> yeah. So how do you find balance and stay on top of your game? One of the things I think that's the hardest when you're wearing all of these hats, and we still deal with this, and I don't think there's ever a way not to, is like the creativity side of your brain is one thing. And the like editing and business side of your brain is another thing. And when, especially when like the creativity is so high and you're, we're producing all day and we're getting so much done, like it's so easy to forget to be consistent on social media or to be thinking about like sending invoices about this or that or following up. It's so easy to let little things slip, little things that just you don't remember. And then like pulling yourself out of that to go do the, those little things is really difficult. I would say we're not always great about it, but then you're also risking, I think, losing like the magic of the inspiration. And I don't know. We don't know the solution yet. I've also just accepted that there will probably, it will there never will be, be one thing we don't do. It will never be perfectly balanced. It just won't. What What's your perspective on that? Because you come from it, same problem, different, different side. side. Yeah. Well, I was going to say I just read in the Creativity Act by Rick Rubin. So good. I'm but. not far in it at all. I know you guys finished it, right? So the one chapter that I've read thus far had something good to say about creativity is more than just creating an awesome melody or song or right. guitar riff or singing a, something cool. It can be like, oh, I think that would look better over here or crafting an email like Creativity is more than that. And then seeing like those mundane everyday things as actually using your creative muscle yeah. might give you more passion to execute them and give you more fulfillment in them. Or at least that's what I took from what he had said. No, it's I'm paraphrasing. I think that that was the best thing to take from it. I think realizing that creativity lives in so many places, in crafting emails, in structuring your day, in your social media, like how am I going to market this? And you're right. And I feel like, Maybe something we can take from this is if we are always operating in a space of looking at it as a chance to be creative, you're always in that creative space, even if you're doing those little tasks. Then it doesn't feel like you're taking yourself out of it and like out yeah. of the creative zone. You're yeah. like exercising it in a new way, mm -hmm. which is really, really good. And that was a really, really, yeah, you kind of just I, got the book. I don't know <laughs> if I practice it, but I did read that and I was like, that's interesting. I'm going to think of writing my emails that way. So one of the things I want to talk to you guys about, because you are producers, you're singers, you're songwriters, but you're not like mid-level at any of those things. Like you're doing them at like a professional level. How do you do all of them at a high level and master them rather than spreading yourself down. I would say at the start of our career, we had no idea what we were doing. We were street busking. We knew nothing about the music industry. We didn't know anything about the legal side, anything about the payment side. Nothing about production. Nothing about production. We weren't great singers. And how Ooh. old were you at the time? 13 or 14. Okay. So we're 21 now, so it's been seven years since we knew nothing. And we, now we know a little more than nothing, but not that much. <laughs> I 100% agree with that. At the beginning, we were like, well, people write songs and they sing. So let's learn how to write songs and sing. And we spent time on that. And then we actually got to a level of success with that. We were on Radio Disney. It yeah. was great. And then we realized we weren't happy with things because we weren't controlling the sound. We were actually going to quit. quit. For like 100%. We just didn't think the deals were favorable. We couldn't find producers who we felt really understood us artistically and got on our level in terms of being respectful and having deals that worked for everybody. So then it finally occurred to us, like, why don't we produce and take charge of that? We didn't think we could. We nobody, everyone kind of discouraged it, you know, no, no, why would you do that? Well, let's just learn how to produce. So then we focused all on that and we stopped thinking about social media. Uh, yeah. We took like a four month, five break just to produce we literally locked ourselves in a basement with no windows for 12 hours a day and just oh, it was great press buttons so great for the mental health. i actually i actually loved it it that was, was probably the best time of our lives one of the <laughs> most fulfilling times of my life honestly i felt so great going to bed every day just feeling really like creatively worked and also i had like i had a lot of fun with it i had fun with carly i think we were you know kind of getting on the same page really like it was cool because like we'd do it together and we'd have and even this some still happens now where like we're mixing a song and like I'll be like, OK, I have notes and she'll be like, OK, I have notes. And then they're, they're the, the same, which is cool. So it was a really, really fulfilling time of my life personally. 
and mine. Like I said, it was the best times of our lives. Then we finally gave a thought to like our visuals. Like that was never visuals. What does that matter? What's the brand? Then we focused on that. And then, you know, by doing all of that, we kind of learned why each thing was uniquely important. And now, you know, seven years later at this point, we've had like years of experience in every single area. We understand why every single area is important. So we're probably spending half of our day just learning how to get better at everything. Yeah. Most of our, I think most of our career is not just spent working, it's spent learning. learning. I think the road to knowledge is never ending. And I feel like we still have so much to learn. I think what Carly said is so right. Like we knew nothing and now we know just maybe a little bit more than nothing. Maybe, (laughs) maybe because tomorrow everything could change. That's it's just you always have to keep going. I guess industry could change. There's a new TikTok or there's a new yeah. streaming way to stream music. Do you remember when TikTok was Musically? Yeah, I wasn't on Musically, but yes, we were, were barely on, on Musically. Okay, we were like maybe made five videos. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure all of them flopped. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then TikTok came, and we didn't even think. Like, I remember, I was like, TikTok, what a stupid name. Yeah, Kesha owns that name. Right, for song. right. Like, what? That could not have been more wrong in my life. Yeah. Literally never been more wrong. <laughs> and then you have to sort of like reinvent yourself and figure out how to market your music yeah. in that way. And yeah. then there might be anything. You kind of just yeah. have to keep evolving with the times and figuring it out as you go. You're, you're online. You're content creators, which you, you have to be, unfortunately, <laughs> as a musician. Well, first I'll ask this. Is that something that you guys enjoy doing is content creation? Or do you wish it was just music? I have a take. What's your take? And I used to not feel like this, but I do now. Really? It doesn't matter whether I like it or don't because it's the way of the world. And if I'm not doing it, someone else is. And I think that, you know, it can be fun. It totally can be. There's a good side and a bad side, but I definitely think it's the way of the world now, especially when you are independent and you really are the driver of your own bus. I think it's so important to be like, well, what can I do? And if I'm not doing something, how can I do it? I used to not feel like that, but I do I was not expecting that to come out of your mouth just now. I think that's a good take. I mean, well, everyone who makes music wishes they could just make Make music music all day. day. Like, I've never met someone who actually is like a true musician who's like, yeah, man, like, I don't even like this that much. Like, I just make TikToks. TikToks. I've never met someone like that. But, you know, the people who understand it and get good at it, they tend to succeed. And also, I think maybe finding content that we enjoy making has helped. Like, we make a lot of music content. We're not doing so many. We don't do dances. I don't know how to dance. I'd love to learn, but not today. And it doesn't help your brand. It doesn't. To do a dance. But, like, when I'm, I mean, I make, like, lyric videos. And Martina does, Mm -hmm. like, production stuff. When I'm talking about lyrics, like, I'm passionate about it anyways. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to like it. And I just don't look at my face when I talk. That's my biggest thing. I think there's also such a talent to making short form content that is engaging and evokes an emotion out of people. I don't think we talk enough about the talent that it takes. Wait, it's hard. To, you know, blow up on TikTok for your music. I mean, your videos blow up all the time. There is something about you that people resonate with. And whether that's something that you're born with or you've learned over time, I don't feel like we talk enough about the talent that is making something that is so much more abstract and long form like music digestible and relatable and likable to a huge audience that may have never found you before. That is such a talent. And that's why when people say like, oh, like their music is just TikTok music. It just blew up on TikTok. It doesn't matter. They did it. And I have nothing but the utmost respect for people who have found a way to make this kind of a platform work for themselves for an art form that is way more, you know, serious or maybe not serious, but definitely more, you know, abstract and long form. It's such a talent and I have so much respect for it. With the rise of social media and how it relates to the music industry, Are you happy that you have to create content or would you rather not? I think you guys probably feel the same thing. I think a lot of musicians, like when you're trying to promote yourself on social media, it can feel trivial 
And that can lead to burnout because you're trying to come up with creative ideas of how to pitch yourself rather than using your skills to like make a new song, something that really keeps you passionate. Um, I do feel embarrassed sometimes posting like the things that I do because I think I look at myself from an outside perspective. For some reason, it's an insecure thing of mine. I'll like watch a video back of mine as like an outside viewer, like pretending that I'm not myself watching myself you know what i mean oh 100 percent. and then you like a no. <laughs> okay it's all good yeah you're back on Dang. and then you like imagine so, all the mean things they say <laughs> yeah i'll like watch myself like almost as like a either an outsider or like even as a hater like what would someone have something bad to say about this so i'll watch myself from an outside perspective and be like this is dumb and then i'll read one comment that like validates that thought and <laughs> and then i'm like oh it's true it's true. And so that's the thing that I don't like about trying to do like music on social media because yeah. I felt like if I was just doing like legit stuff that was like not mashups, not choir videos, it was here's my song and you know, something that's like actually takes a lot of talent and skill, which I'm diminishing myself again because you guys just said like it takes skill to make a short form video, but it feels trivial. And what I'm doing with you guys this week doesn't. But if I was just putting that stuff on social media, I don't think it would do well. No one pays attention to yeah. those videos, if we're being honest. Like, yeah. I, yeah. So, okay. There's a back and forth. No, I have a question on that. So, when you're like, yeah, I I have these things I say in my head, and then one comment, like, validates that. First of all, that happens to us, too, all the time. But my question is, so if you then release your music, the music that you don't feel is trivial and stuff, do you look at it from an outside perspective in the same way slash if someone were to leave the same types of comments on that would that bother you in the same way because it's not trivial that's such a like that's making me think because no I i've never done that with my music interesting i've never done that that's really with, good that's great yeah <laughs> And maybe that's really telling of like the confidence level I have in my music versus my mm -hmm. content. And like maybe that's what I should be focused on. And if people made... We're in the ex existential like crisis thing again. <laughs> I mean, I think it's so great that you're confident on your music and I think you should be confident on everything because you're doing really, really, really well. well. And I was also just really going to quickly interject and say I'm really happy that you felt like yeah. working with us was meaningful <laughs> meaningful and mattered to you that's again a huge like compliment to us and it means a lot to us so thank you how have you guys felt like you're able to sustain yourselves with the ebbs and flows of financial stability if someone wanted to make money they would not go into music, music. No, is not the not. right industry that's yeah. maybe the worst industry if you're talking about finance financial or stability, stability. yeah mm -hmm. any stability yeah <laughs> yeah you have a great month and then you make no money the next month. For sure. So I think we've done a few things and I think I'm really happy with the things we've done. One, we don't allow ourselves to be emotionally attached to dollar signs. I think mm -hmm. that's really important. We're emotionally attached to the work we're creating mm -hmm. um, because a lot of dollar signs can make you feel like you're doing really great. But when you start feeling like you're doing really great, you stop trying to do really great, you know, mm -hmm. and you get comfortable and then it's hard to do it again and again. I also think... When you're nervous about money, you're also acting in a different way. You just you're looking at things differently, and that's also you're you're looking at things more of like a survival mindset, and that's also not, in my opinion, the best way to make music and to make great music. Um, I think like not being emotionally attached to dollar signs. That's not where we know we're doing something right. We know we're doing something right when we're making good music. And it just so happens that being really, really good at your job tends to result in being financially secure. Mm -hmm. um, I also think we don't, you know, obviously when you're young and you make money, you want to spend and you're excited. Now I think we don't look at things like that anymore. We're much more like mature about how we're putting our money in. We're reinvesting. We're not living above or even maybe at our means we're trying to live as far below our means as humanly possible while still not like starving to death um <laughs> that's no fun no. and then also you know we just assume that it's not coming and we're yeah. really happy when it does and the biggest thing i think we've done and then like if you have anything that i sure. haven't uh, said you're killing it though thank you mm -hmm. that's like a list in my head 
we diversify our income. So by wearing different hats and being good at different things, you're getting paid for all these different things, you know. Obviously, social media can make money, but then also music, streaming, producing for others, royalties on that, sync, XYZ, XYZ. So if you're having a bad month here in this one thing, something's always coming in, you know. Mm -hmm. And it also, I think, makes every hat feel valuable, which Mm -hmm. is why we put so much time into every hat and get better at everything. So it's like kind of just coaching ourselves into that. I think something that's really important that we've, I guess, learned along the way is that when we are focusing on making the best music possible, things always somehow figure out a way to come back to us. And when that is like the main goal, rather than chasing money, it seems to work out. But I will be like totally honest, like, we have like everything has been through trial and error like we've totally oh my gosh we've made every mistake we've made every <laughs> mistake in the book and i'm sure we're going to make every mistake in the next book yeah. but i think you like we've learned a lot by failing too yeah. and oh me too it's literally how much value are we adding that's how much value mm. we're gonna get you know yeah mm. because why should you put your trust into someone and put your hard-earned time and money into someone if they're not going to take your project and your vision seriously there's no reason to do that sorry i interrupted i was i was about to say that's like the smartest thing we've said thank you we value people putting their trust into us so we're gonna make them know that it was worth it otherwise honestly we don't deserve it we don't deserve yes. your time, your money, your effort, your trust. If we yeah. cannot provide that for you, like we, for example, we're producing your project. We put the same amount of respect and time into your stuff that we put into ours. Yes. And it shouldn't be any other way. We're not just, you know, it's not just, oh, she's paying us. Oh, she's coming oh, out no. here, by the way, being very generous, generous with your time, coming out here to track vocals. It's not about that. It's about you're putting your time and value and to us, we have to put that back into you as well. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys feel a certain pressure as women in the industry to prove yourself because majority of the producers are male? I'm going to answer this. Yeah. So the first album we did, self-produced, was completely written, produced, and mixed by just us. And we did that because, well, because we could and we worked hard for it. Yes. So that's why. That's number one. Two... And this was really more not so much to prove ourselves next to men, but to prove ourselves for clients, if that was the way it was going to go. We really wanted people to understand it wasn't an accident. That was really big. Yeah. That this was, we had the talent to do this and do it again and again and again and better for For other people. So we did that. And then we released a couple more singles, same, same way, written, produced, mixed by us. And then after that, we were like, all right. In our heads, we've proven ourselves. Now let's stop worrying about proving ourselves ever again. Because the thing is, if people are looking for a way to say you didn't do something or to discredit you, they're going to figure it out. They're going to figure it out. If people are looking to defend you and to, you know, support you, they're going to do that too. And we can't fight the war of feminism and make a hit song all at once. It is too much. And I don't think men are our competition. I think we are our competition. We are. So after we were able to do that in the beginning, and that wasn't so much towards men. I mean, yeah, sure. It did, like, show that, like, hey, we can do it just like them. But it was more just for, like, getting jobs, really. Yeah. And then after that, it was over. We were like, beef's over. (laughs) I also think there's a certain point where you have to be like, look, I'm in the room for a reason. Someone else could be here, and it's not because of their gender. It's because of their talent level. So if I'm here, I'm talented enough to be here. It's kind of that whole like fighting imposter syndrome thing. But like at some point, I feel like we had to be like, look, we're here for a reason and we're just going to do the best we can. Because the only way that you're going to prove yourself is is by by doing doing it, is by doing your best. And then, I mean, at some point people can't like, you know, fight you on it. Well, People people can. People can, but like, but who cares? Yeah, I think. Man, we used to talk a lot about like, oh, we're the two percent, and like, yeah, like we're we're gonna want to talk about for two hours. Like, yes, we do get acted inappropriately towards. Yes, I do think we don't always get paid what we're probably worth. 
yes, I do think in meetings sometimes people look over us or don't necessarily respect us in the way we'd like to be respected. Or speak to us in a way that or they s- would never speak to someone else. Yeah. And with all that said, we still got to go show up and do our best. That's just it. I think we'll end there. Everybody get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Get a good lawyer. That's what we've learned today. Diversify your skills and like burn out to feeling a creative high. Yeah. 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 I love it. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you you. for having us. Thanks for joining me again. Quite a a talk as always. 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 (laughs)